when negotiating, numbers are very important. Hence, you have to know your numbers. Let's say you're negotiating a storage and handling deal. And you have the following numbers from your accounting department. So in this case, storage and handling, okay? So at 2,000 units, you pay $20,000. And at 8,000 units, you pay $47,000. The assumption here is that your accountant is using fixed and variable cost to get the total cost. And you are supposed to use this information to negotiate a favorable storage and handling deal. Now, during the negotiation, you just can't say, you guys need to reduce the storage and handling cost. Because then the question is by how much and what is the effect of that, right? You also cannot just suggest that we need to find bigger or smaller space. Since the issue of the impact will still come up, what you actually need to do first is to understand your fixed and variable cost. This way, you will know how the total cost was arrived at and which part of the total cost can be altered and to what extent. Now you have to remember that total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. Just a quick reminder, you can test your knowledge of these and many more by visiting zeritnetwork.com forward slash CIPS level 4 practice test where you can access many CIPS exercises and relevant study guide summaries. Uh, I have a link in the video description or in the comment section depending on where you are watching this video from. If total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost, then what is fixed cost? Okay, first of all, fixed costs are the costs that do not vary with the level of output you produce. For instance, the rent of a particular room doesn't change with the level of units you produce in that room. Basically, a large warehouse with less items in it just means that you are paying rent and storing emptiness. Meaning if your fixed cost is 80,000, then the output level will not change it. Now, what about the variable cost? Well, variable costs are costs that will vary with your production level. For example, does the overall cost of material rise if 10,000 units are made instead of 8,000? So remember, raw material is an example of variable cost. Now, before we look at the question you started with, I just need to remember that there are some items, okay? There are some items which have an element of both fixed and uh, variable cost. An example is online storage spaces. So there are companies that will charge you a fixed cost as long as you store up items up to a certain GB or whatever space they've allocated. And then anything past that is going to vary with uh, the megabytes, okay? Or the gigabytes, whatever it is, the space that you're using. So the more space you use past that, you'll pay as per the number of space, you know, as per the space increases. Now that you understand the basics, let's look at the question. So the first step is that you will need to calculate the variable cost for the storage and handling. This way, we will know how much an increase in unit in production level will cost you. Therefore, variable cost per unit is the difference in cost at two production levels divided by the difference in production level. Okay, so forty-seven thousand dollars. Minus $20,000, that will give you $27,000. So this is how much the cost varied. Now in terms of units, it's 8,000 minus 2,000 units, and that is 6,000 units. Okay, these are the units responsible for the variation. So the variable cost per unit in this case will be 27,000 divided by 6,000. And so we know that each unit, the variable cost for each unit is 4 point five dollars now that you have variable cost per unit let's find the fixed cost so that will mean that at any level okay so at 2000 units the total variable cost will be 2000 times 4.5 which means 9000 and at 8000 units the the, the the total variable cost will be 8000 times 4.5 and that will give us 36000 now we know that total cost is equals to fixed cost plus variable cost. And therefore, fixed cost is equal to total cost minus variable cost. And uh, is the assumption you're making. We know that fixed cost doesn't change the level of production, right? Which means whichever level we pick. So let's say we go with the, 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 the 47,000. So if we take 47,000 minus 36,000, then that tells us that our fixed cost is 
dollars. And what if you work with the other production level, maybe at 2,000? So in this case, you're talking about the 20,000 minus the 9,000 total variable cost, and you still end up with a fixed cost being $11,000. So basically, whichever level of production, at whatever level of production, the fixed cost remains the same. Again, before you look at another example, I just want to remind you again that uh, if you're interested in study guides or practice exercises that relates to, you know, CPAs modules, then just go to zeritnetwork.com forward slash uh, CIPS level 4 practice test, okay? So zeritnetwork.com forward slash CIPS or CIPS, CIPS level 4 practice test. You'll get a number of, uh, you know, multiple choice questions and many other stuff that can guide you. So try this example on your own and let me know how it goes. So in this case, you have transport cost at 2,000 units is $15,000 and at 8,000 units, it's $21,000. Find the variable cost and the fixed cost elements. So as you go through these, you should get the variable cost per unit to be $1 and the fixed cost to be $13,000. So go through that, okay? See you in the next video.